The argument I'm going to give traces back to Descartes, the great early modern philosopher. But I'm not going to follow the details of his argument, but the basic idea goes back to Descartes. And it starts by asking you to imagine a story. So suppose that I woke up this morning. That is to say, at a certain point, I look around my room and I see the familiar sights of my darkened bedroom. I hear perhaps the sounds of the cars outside my house my alarm clock ringing, what have you, I move out of the room toward the bathroom, planning to brush my teeth. As I enter the bathroom, it's much more light. I look in the mirror, and here's where things get really weird. I don't see anything. Normally, of course, when I look in the mirror, I see my face. I see my head. I see the reflection of my torso. But now, as I'm looking into the mirror, I don't see anything at all. Instead, I see the shower reflected behind me. Normally, that's blocked, of course, by me, by my body. But I don't see my body. Slightly freaked out, I reach for my head, or perhaps we should say I reach for where I would expect my head to be, but I don't feel anything there. Glancing down at my arms, I don't see any arms. Now, I'm really panicking. As I begin trying to touch my body, I don't feel anything. I don't, not only can't I feel anything with my fingers, I don't have any sensations where my body should be. Now, we could continue the story, but I probably said enough for you to grant that what I've just started doing, a, a novelist could do a better job of telling the story than I just did, but what I've just done was basically imagine, I've imagined a story in which I discover that my body doesn't exist. Or I've imagined a story in which my body perhaps ceased to exist. Or I've imagined a story in which I exist, or at least my mind exists. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking thoughts like, why can't I see my body in the mirror? Why can't I feel my head? What's going on? I'm panicking, right? We've got a story in which I'm thinking all sorts of thoughts. My mind clearly exists. And yet, for all that, my body does not exist. We, we can certainly, it seems, imagine that possibility. Now, the brilliant thing about this argument is it goes from that to a conclusion about there being a difference between my mind and my body. What we've just done, after all, is imagine that my mind exists, but my body does not. Now, what does that show? Descartes says what it shows is the mind and the body must be two logically distinct things. The mind and the body cannot be the same thing. Because, after all, what I just did was imagine my mind existing without my body. But how could I even do that, even in imagination? How could it even be possible to imagine my mind without my body if talking about my mind is just a way of talking about my body. If they're really, bottom line, metaphysically speaking, the same thing, then you couldn't have one without the other. And after all, so, 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 so here's a podium. Try to tell a story in which this podium exists, but this podium does not exist. You can't do it, right? If the podium is just one thing, the podium, and if there's just one thing, you could tell a story in which it exists, you could tell a story in which it doesn't exist, but you can't tell a story in which it exists and doesn't exist. If I can tell a story in which A exists and B doesn't exist, 
it's got to follow that A and B are not the same thing. Because if B was just another word for, another way of talking about A, then to imagine A existing but B not existing would be imagining A existing but, well, B is just A, A not existing. But of course, you can't imagine a world in which A exists but A doesn't exist. Put the same point the other way around. If I can imagine A without B, then A and B have to be logically distinct things. They cannot be identical. Look, it's one thing to be clear, a couple things to be clear about. What exactly is this argument not doing? The argument is not saying if something is possible, if I can imagine it, it's true. You know, I can imagine unicorns. That doesn't mean unicorns exist. That's not what the argument is saying. The argument is only making a much more specific claim. If I can imagine one thing without the other, they must be separate things. Now, of course, it could still be that in the real world, the one thing cannot exist without the other. There may be some sort of metaphysical laws that tie the two things so tightly together that you will never actually get one without the other. That's not the question. The point is just, if I can at least imagine the one thing without the other, they must, in fact, be two separate things. Because if there was really just one thing there, you couldn't imagine it without it. Since I can imagine...